All right, so I'm going to go over the rendering part of the bouncing ball real quick just so we can see that. I think that's what it was. I talked too much on Monday. All right, Maya's still thinking. There we go. No, we're not yet. All right. Uh, so first thing, I'm going to set my project to the bouncing ball. And then open my bouncing ball. There we go. OK. So uh, I'm going to hide this one. That was my example of how I would do that. Um, cool. So first thing I'm going to do is get a good camera angle set up. I'm going to go to Panels, Perspective, and make a new camera. Um, these work different than cinema. Once you're inside the camera, it shows you it here. And you can just move it around like regular. You don't have to click the um, one button to get inside of it or nothing like that. It's just go into the camera, move around, and you're good. Uh, I'm going to turn on my resolution gate. And I'll line this up with how I want the, animation, the camera to move. Uh, I think I'm also going to take my focal length to I don't know, maybe 20. That's too aggressive. Uh, 27. Okay, I want to make sure that the ball is in frame the entire time. Oh, look at that. It's so close, right? Okay, now if it rolls off at the end, I'm fine with that too. Like, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out just a hair. This will give me a little bit of freedom inside of After Effects to adjust if I need to. Cool. Um, I'll probably have to, I'll probably darken this or something. I don't like how this edge is here. I want to darken that. Okay. So I'm going to lock my camera into this position. So I'm just going to hit S. Nope. I'm going to highlight all these things and then hit S. There we go. So now my camera's locked. If I move it, uh, if I move it, I just adjust my timeline and it'll jump back to where it was. Okay. So I accidentally moved it, adjust my timeline, it jumps back. So now I'm going to switch to my perspective view. So I hold space bar, hold left, go to perspective. All right, there's my camera. I can make it bigger so you can see it. I notice when I hit uh, the Z key to undo, I got this. The undo cue is turned off. One of the fun Maya facts or fun Maya quirks is that your undos will just suddenly get turned off and there's no reason behind it. So I'm going to go to the little running man here. I'm going to go to my undos, and then I'm going to go to undos on. Again, I have no idea why it gets turned off, how it gets turned off. Nobody in the world knows. It just does. Um, cool. So now I need to create some lights. Everything's going to be under this window. Under Arnold, we'll create lights. For a setup like this, I like to create two lights. One of them is a sky dome. And I'm going to take the intensity of this down to, let's say, 0.25. And then I want to see what this looks like. So I'm going to go to Arnold Render. So this is a good overall like fill light. That's still too intense. I'm going to knock it down to maybe 0.125. OK. Arnold will automatically update. You saw as I typed that in that the screen flashed, it got darker. So as this button is not a play button, but it's a stop button, every time I change this, it will update that rendering without me having to hit the render button again. OK, so uh, if I'm going with something kind of pop color, you know, fun, oops, I might go with something like one. Uh, if I want a little bit more contrast in my scene, typically I'll lower this light. I think 0.25 might be a good number. I'm going to close that. Then I'm going to go to Arnold Lights. And the lighting in here you'll find is very similar to the lighting we would have inside of um, cinema. Area lights, sky domes. Um, obviously the physical skies. So I'm going to go to area light here. I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to move it into position. And I'm going to light this from above like this. So that's usually a good angle is like your camera is on this side, the lights on that side. We'll still get shadows. Um, we'll still get some shading on it. If we blast it from one side, we'll get these crazy long shadows. Like if I had the sideways like this, we'll have long shadows that appear there. I don't like that. I like this. Okay. 
So I'm going to just render this now and see. Now, we don't see a huge difference. The area lights inside of Maya, inside of Arnold, are very weak. So a one intensity is like nothing. So 5,000, still nothing, holy cow. Uh, 50,000, we're starting to get something. 500,000, there we go, OK? So you may have to go up that high. Everyone's scene is going to be different. So just keep typing until you see a change, and then you know what range you're in, OK? And if anything, blast it out. That's too much. And then you know where you have your in-betweens. There's two, still too bright. One is going to be still too bright. But we'll just see. Yeah, still too bright. And half that. There we go. OK, so that looks like it's a pretty decent lighting setup. I can see the light, the ball, I can see the shadow underneath. Those two things work. I don't need to add shadows to these. Default, Arnold adds it automatically. The size of my light is the size, uh, the softness of the shadows. Bigger lights, softer shadows. Smaller lights, sharper shadows. So even though this thing is huge, if I were to shrink it down like this, I'll zoom in on the sphere so we can see it. The lighting itself didn't change, but that shadow is a lot crisper now. Okay. Oops. And I undid too far, and I went back to that. Let's try that again. Render. Good. That seems decent. Uh, I may move it out just a hair more this way, and a little bit more rotation. There we go. Just want to add a little bit more light to this side. Uh, I'll adjust it afterwards if I need. Uh, so now I'm going to assign materials, if I save also. So I'm going to go to the hotbox. I have the platform selected. I'm going to hotbox, go to lighting and shading, and assign a new material. Um, in cinema, we had one material that we used for the entire thing, pretty much. Um, in Maya, we have Maya's materials, and we have Arnold materials. We're using Arnold as a renderer, so we're using Arnold materials. Okay. Um, inside here, we only have to be worried about this one, AI standard surface. Uh, other ones do other things. For what we're doing in this class, the standard surface should be good for all of that. When we click it, we get this open. This is our attribute editor. So I'm going to label this as platform material. Uh, very similar settings, but everything in this case, in uh, Maya, is all under one window. So all your material settings are right here versus cinema, where you would hit different tabs to go to different areas. So base is just what color you want it to be. So in this case, I'm going to go with something, let's say like that for my base. I'm going to go to my specular. Let's look at this and see what it looks like. Oops. Wrong button, wrong button. All right, so that looks pretty good. You'll see that I have a lot of reflection on here. If I go into my material under specular, this is where that's coming from. So uh, a roughness of zero is super crisp. A roughness of one is super smooth as far as the reflections go. If I want to take the reflections off, I can just take this down. If I want to colorize my reflections, I can pull that up. There's not much color there in the scene, so that's why it's kind of dimmer. OK, so I think I'm going to leave this at maybe like 0.5 because I want some. All right, so that looks pretty good. Nice kind of clay rendering. Uh, let's close that, close this. Now let's grab the sphere. Same thing, hot box with a space bar, assign new material, Arnold shader, standard surface. And oops, ball material. Now, uh, we talked about this before. So the ball has to have some kind of material on this so that we can see it move. Um, everywhere you see these little checkerboards, that means you can add a material to that item or a texture to that item. So under color, instead of giving this a straight color, I'm going to click on the checkerboard. And then I'm going to find in this list what I want. So I'm going to go to ramp. Ramp is a gradient. Um, if I don't see anything in here, I'm going to hit 6, and it's not going to update. It's probably updating. Let me drag. Yep, there it is. OK. So if I hit 5, I don't see it. If I hit 6, I do see it. Uh, I'm going to change this to no interpolation, 
drag this white back. And if I move it to exactly 0.5, then I have basically a half white, half black sphere that I could then hit play and I could see it rotating. Okay. Obviously changing the colors, I can click on the circle, double click the swatch. Feel free to play around if you don't understand the tools as you'll you know, get more comfortable with it the more you play with them. If I want more of these, I just click in the middle. What's that? It does look like a pill. It's an aspirin. It's a bouncing aspirin. <laughs> uh, I can slide this over. I can slide this over. And now I have gone too far. Let me undo that. <laughs> now I have this line almost in the middle. It actually is perfectly in the middle. Today, you know, as far as moving and working, I'm pretty good. All right. There we go. Okay. Let me get this close to the ground so we can see it there. Come on, right there. I'm going to render. Okay, same thing, I have reflections on it. I may not want reflections. In this case, I actually don't mind it. It feels nice and clean. Um, they don't look like they're in the way, so I'm actually gonna leave the reflections. Um, but again, I could go back, click on the ball, go to the attribute editor, click on the ball material, adjust the roughness if I need. But I don't. Cool. So camera set up, ball is set up material-wise, the platform is set up material-wise, the lighting is set up, I'm ready to render. So this little gear clapper right here, same icon that Cinema had, by the way. Uh, most 3D softwares will use that. Uh, I'm going to give this a name. So this will be Sarcona underscore bouncy ball. I'm going to change my format to um, TIFFs. You can leave them as EXRs. Um, TIFFs are just more friendly for most of your software that you use. Uh, we need to make sure this is name dot number dot extension. So just like cinema, that's not going to change. I'm rendering frame one to frame 200. I am rendering it through perspective one. This is my rendering settings, 960 by 540. And then under the Arnold tab, this is where I'm going to choose my quality settings. So typically you're going to put the camera up to four um, and you don't need to worry about the rest. Okay. Um, if you see any jaggedness, so when I hit render, I give it a minute until it's done. It's at 15, 16, whatever. Um, if I were to zoom in, well, if I were to be at 100% with this thing, let me hit this one to one, and I saw some jaggeds around the sphere, I would know that my settings are probably not optimal. Just to show you what the extreme would look like, I'll put this at negative three. That's what it looks like at negative three. Okay, this is what it looks like at two. Not bad, but you can see there's some chunkiness happening right here. Oops. Okay, so uh, four is typically a good value to go with. Cool, I like that. And then I need motion blur, so I'm going to go to motion blur. Let's stop that for a second. Uh, enable, and I'm going to turn camera off. If you animated your camera sliding across with your ball, everything in the scene would basically be motion blurred because the camera's movement would then blur. Uh, in this case, we don't want that. We want everything to be clear except for the animation that's moving. So just deformation, um, shaders we don't need to worry about. I'm going to do three keys. When you do motion blur, it looks at the frame that you're on and then it looks at the frames behind it and the frames in front of it to figure out where it's going. So the more keys we have, the easier it is to understand how it's moving from one frame to the next, okay? And then I prefer having mine at the um, end of the frame because it gives me a um, trail. Let me hit stop, let me zoom out, let me go to a high action scene here. So like right there. There we go. So that's end of frame. And if I go to starter frame, that doesn't look very good at all. And if I go to center of frame, then this is kind of like in the middle, right? So it feels weird having the blur here when we haven't gotten there yet. So uh, I prefer end of frame because then it feels like it's kind of evenly distributed. So that's what I do. 
Cool? Cool. All right, so all we've done here, we went to the Common tab, gave it a name, changed it to TIFF. You could leave it as EXR if you want. Um, set our um, name.number.extension, set the frame range, set the camera. Our size was already set. Under Arnold, we set this to four, and we set our motion blur to enabled and turn camera off and set that to three and end of frame. More motion blur, you can change the length. It'll stretch out the motion blur more. Typically, you don't need to do that. So now I'm ready to render. So I'm going to go uh, into my camera perspective one. I'm going to go to my rendering menu, go to render, and say render sequence option box. In um, Maya, there's a batch render. Maya's default renderer, you can do a batch render, and it goes a lot quicker. However, with Arnold, we don't have a license to do a batch render. So we have to do this render sequence, which is the same thing. It's just going to go a little slower. Okay. Um, pick the camera, perspective one, render sequence. So what it's going to do now is it's going to open the render window, very similar to you saw in cinema. Open the render window, render our stuff, save it. Open the render window, render our stuff, save it. Now, if I didn't set my project to here, to there, to here, to here. Okay, if I didn't set my project there, Maya doesn't know where to save our stuff. We've never specified where to save our project. So when I originally created my project, set my project, now it knows to put all my images inside the images folder. So there's my images coming in. If I didn't do that, I have no idea where they're going to end up. They could end up in someone else's folder who then comes in and deletes it because they don't know what they are. So this process is going to take some time. It's going to go through, render out each one of these. I'm going to hit escape. That's how you stop a rendering. There we go. Uh, in After Effects, I'm going to pretend that my rendering is done. I go up here to this top window. I double click. I find my rendering. I open my sequence. I hit import. This is the same process as you had in intro. Um, you can double click it and hit play to render it or to preview it to see what it looks like. Ooh, so drippy. Um, you can drag this onto a new composition. Oops, come on. You can edit the size of it if you need to, so I'm proportionately scaling that up. I can go under my effects, go under color correction, go under curves, and I'm adjusting my curves on this to make it, you know, pop a little bit more. I can add vignettes, blah, 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 you know the routine. Once I'm done, I go to file export and I add to render cube. Last semester, we had to do media encoder. Uh, Adobe slash Apple fixed that issue, so we don't have to go to a media encoder anymore. We can go right to the render queue. We click on the word lossless. We click on QuickTime. We click on format options, and we choose Apple ProRes 422HQ. There's a bunch in here of Apple ProRes, but that one I found works pretty good. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go to this. Tell it where to go, 2540, Sarcona, movies. And then give us a name, Sarcona underscore bouncy ball. And then render it out. Other things that people have done in the past, they've added sound effects. That might be something you want to do. If I had multiple cameras, I can go into After Effects and edit those multiple cameras together to show my bouncing ball in a cool way. Um, there's literally a million different things you can do. Don't think that you're locked into, well, he showed it this way, and I must do it that way. It's not how our area works. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you're working in a production there isn't? I'll look into it. <laughs> I will see what, um, I'll see what I need, what we need to do. I thought it was there. All right. Uh, the same way I made a new material in here, I would just go to this. I would go to File. And then you could bring in a file of whatever you want. Okay, And if you look on Google, uh, Tennis Ball Texture, you can find Tennis Ball Textures, stuff like that or that. I think you use something like this. And knowing Wade, I think he actually used as reference and then drew his own because he wanted a specific color and whatever. 
Um, and then you can just bring it in and it'll plop right on there. Cool. And that's it. So for this one, you're turning in your planning, you're turning in your sheet, and you're turning in your movie. Okay. Um, all the stuff that we turn in for the class goes on to the Z drive, which is right here, right there. And then it'll go into this folder called 2540 Bouncy Ball. That should wrap it up. Any questions on that? No, as long as I get it on Saturday, it's fine. Okay. Um, if you come into lab, you can drop it on the folder. They're only open until 2, I think, or 2, Kelly, or uh, Declan? Declan? On, um, Saturday. Saturday.